Hello, everyone. Let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> Otherwise, we would never start. <laughs> um, so, yeah, please find your seats and we can start the day. Come on, come on. There's room. I see people are still getting ready for the day, still drinking their first coffees and uh, chatting. That's nice. This conference means to um, connect people, to make you talk, to make you discuss, um, to... But welcome everyone to the second day of the EduWiki conference 2023 in Belgrade, Serbia. Um, welcome to people that have come, uh, that have arrived here in the meantime. Um, it was, it's nice to have you here. Um, we were sad that you weren't here yesterday, but that's fine. Um, I hope you all had some good night's sleep. Um, I know it's hard at conferences um, to have your like regular quota of sleep, but um, it's still really important to function properly during the whole day because we do have uh, a bunch of program prepared, thanks to Liana and the program team. Um, so, and I hope you had a, a fruitful day yesterday uh, with the program and with uh, personal interconnections and, and discussions. So, um, and I hope you had a good night, uh, like evening maybe. Um, so yeah, today's program is going to be great. So please stick around for sessions. We still have three rooms, this one, Atrium, Forum, which is over there, and Belgrade. I know a lot of people asked about Belgrade. It's right next to the reception, right to the right of the reception. Um, so yeah, um, I would also want to remind you that Trust and Safety team is still here. That's still Sukaina, Silesh, and me. And if you have any problems, troubles, whatever, please feel free to contact us. So that's about it from me. Uh, I'm uh, even I'll take it over for other housekeeping stuff. Good morning. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, give you a couple of reminders. Um, I've sent the uh, streaming links uh, uh, via mailing list uh, so you can share it with uh, people who are um, interested in listening uh, to the sessions. Um, I'll just remind uh, to uh, people who weren't here yesterday that uh, only sessions in Atrium and Forum are recorded, um, not sessions in Belgrade Room. Um, so. Uh, I'll also uh, send this link, uh, these links uh, to the Telegram group. Um, on the, uh, we also have some information regarding the group photo. Uh, we will have the group photo after the first session, so at 10.15. Uh, uh, and we will do it in the backyard uh, of the restaurant. You can go to the backyard um, through the restaurant. So uh, we will guide you, don't worry. So uh, we will have uh, the group photo there if it's not rainy. Uh, but uh, if we do have rain, then and we will do it in front of this room, atrium room. Uh, and uh, one more important thing is the city tour tonight. Um, I've sent some details via mailing list, but I'll repeat it now. And you will have these details um, during the day, sent during the day. Um, we'll have um, a city tour starting at 6 p.m. in front of the hotel, uh, two buses. Uh, and please don't be late uh, because we have to start then. Um, uh, the bus route of the tour will be slightly adapted due, due to the protest, uh, but you'll get to see some of the nice places in Belgrade during that tour. Uh, and then we go to Kalemegdan Fortress. Um, you'll walk through the fortress. You'll see um, other side of the Belgrade um, uh, wh while walking and you'll have the tour guide, really interesting tour guide. Uh, after that, um, you'll go to Skadarlia, um, a restaurant Three Shashira, Three Hats on English. Uh, and um, you can also ask volunteers for a location if you're coming directly to the restaurant. So you don't have to go to the tour if you want to have some rest here in the hotel. You can just join us um, at the dinner at um, 8.30. Um, all of these details, as I said, will be sent uh, by a mailing list during the day. So um, I'm gonna 
give the word to Philip again and uh, please have a nice day today and uh, enjoy today's sessions. Um, thanks, Ivana. So now we have the first plenary session, which is actually a panel discussion uh, that will be led by Yop Ruang Pam. And um, yeah, it's a panel discussion uh, with education program leaders from around the world uh, who will um, share their perspectives on the global, um, on the, on the education system and education and Wikipedia and Wikimedia all together. So uh, a huge round of applause for y'all. <laughs> um, morning, everyone. And it's such a pleasure for me to be here. It's, um, this is my first education conference. Um, and just to introduce myself, I'm, yes, Yo Prang Pam, senior strategist uh, with the Wikimedia Foundation. A lot of the work that I do is focused on movement strategy and supporting our team, our communities and different teams to achieve their strategy, visions, missions, and goals. Um, a little about myself. When I was younger, I started out in media and then, you know, transitioned in my career. And one of the things that I really enjoyed doing um, at the start of my career or start of, you know, my work in, um, in development is, was education. Um, I took on, at that time, this powerful governor who had a focus on education but was just playing lip service. But from there, you know, it sort of just really sparked my interest and my love and my passion for education. I have two kids. One of them is in tertiary and one of them is, is at primary stage. Their education matters. I come from a country where education just complete, has been decimated. So being here is personal on a lot of levels but also very exciting because this is my first Wiki Education Conference and technically my first Wikimedia Conference outside of the shores of Africa. <laughs> so thank you, I'll, I'll be very excited. I'll say don't mind my excitement, just take it as all part of uh, the session today. Um, I'd like to introduce our panelists who will be sit seated here. What we'll have, what we'll be discussing um, on the panel today is, uh, what will happen on the panel today is really a discussion. It's a conversation. Um, there are journeys that people take and something has to spur that journey. Something takes us on that path. And we're hoping that the panel conversation today takes us on that path, that we begin to ruminate, begin to think, begin to explore um, all the beautiful things that can happen globally in education, our role in that space, um, and how we can take the charge and lead. Um, I'd like to invite the panelists, Joao from Brazil. Uh, our panelists will introduce themselves better, but y'all, please. <laughs> um, Bukola from Nigeria, please take a seat. Yay. Uh, Rami from, yeah, oh, Ra we have two Ramis, but yes, please both come. <laughs> Rami from Indonesia and from Morocco. Please come up. <laughs> and then we, we have Frank. Frank, who's uh, from the US. All right, so we have a big panel. Lots. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, right. So the movement strategy process began way back, 2016, 2017. I'm not going to go into too much of the details, but we can share some more afterwards. But that process set our movement on the path for a shared goal towards 2030. We aligned on a set of principles that need to drive our free knowledge or open knowledge movement, depending on who you're talking to, uh, and the principles of knowledge equity, that is that all might have access and knowledge as a service, that all might receive knowledge. A set of 10 recommendations and 47 initiatives now drive this work and our collective advancement towards um, achieving these goals towards 2030. 
Now, what better demonstration of these principles of equity and service than the education ecosystem? However, what is this ecosystem? Um, within this ecosystem, how aware are we of the different actors, different players, different programs, of the different pieces and how they fit, how interconnected or not are we? Uh, what priorities continue to drive our work? What types of passions and visions push us every day to continue to do this work? So in keeping with the principles of movement strategy, what might be the most interesting ways that education could advance within our movement? Who we are on this journey, who are we on this journey with? And what is that North Star that we keep looking towards? We may not have it yet, but is it important to begin to have those conversations? How might we envision our futures collectively and still continue along our different paths? As education is perhaps the most established and structured piece of the free knowledge movement, would I be wrong in saying that? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as it is perhaps the most structured piece of our free knowledge movement currently, our panel discussion today is crucial as they will be discussing the futures that we could envision and the ways we could do that from our different parts of the world. We'll try to envision this um, and the budding innovation pieces. We'll try to recognize the people that we should make sure to carry al along on this journey and how we work towards our shared vision on education. So to our panelists, I'll give you two minutes just to get us started and um, thinking about a few things. I have one question. Um, I'm excited. I've told you why I'm excited to be here, but I'd like to hear from each of our panelists, starting from you, Rami. That's okay. Um, what are you most excited about in terms of education? Um, and why do you think that this work is important? Two minutes, starting with you. Yeah. Brahim, sorry. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Brahim Faraji from uh, Morocco, um, coordinator of uh, education program with the user group. So, uh, the first thing, if we start, imagine that every children uh, have skills and have this, uh, how we can say that, the skill that he know how he look for information, how he can evaluate, evaluate uh, sources and how he will produce information. So then I think that will change every nation. So education start uh, from the beginning, from schools. So if we want uh, to talk about development of any nation, we should talk about education. So uh, every program and uh, like we did uh, with education team at the foundation, uh, with the program uh, Reading Wikipedia and Classroom, uh, give us a uh, great idea about the impact uh, that we can have uh, through the project, through Wikipedia to develop the nation. So, uh, yeah, we are super glad and super excited to continue uh, uh, to develop uh, education through Wikipedia inside class, uh, classroom and uh, with teachers, especially. Thank you very much, you. Rahim. Rami. Um, thank you very much. So, hi hey everyone. My name is Rahmi or Amy, if you uh, know me as Amy. Um, so, I started to join as a volunteer in 2016. And then, um, because I started to get more active, uh, especially as a member of Wikimedia Indonesia, in 2018, I was uh, given a responsibility by Wikimedia Indonesia to uh, hold a project called Wiki Goes to School, and that's for Japanese Wikipedia. And from the conversations with the lecturers of the university that um, we were, um, that uh, were our targets at the time, um, it was really, um, for them, it was really amazing that they eventually can teach um, local language with 
a platform that they never thought about before. They never even knew that there were local language Wikipedia uh, and that they could uh, make use of it as, um, as a platform that the students can use, that uh, they can use to teach and uh, something like that. So. Um, yeah, with the help of the volunteers, the project went well, and then I'm just excited to see uh, where the education project will take us, and also like the volunteers to, uh, you know, to to create a, a space where everything can be accessible and everything can be available, and uh, people just can, as Ryan said, uh, can have like the skill to access. Uh, the information uh, and content um, easily because um, I think uh, that is uh, one of the most vital skills that uh, people should uh, look for, especially now. So yeah, I'm just uh, really excited to see where the education uh, program will take us and also how it will be able to also grow the community, um, especially within the movement. Thank Fantastic. you very much. Thank you. Bukola? Okay. Um, good morning. And my name is Bukola James, and I'm from Nigeria. I'm a certified trainer of the Reading Wikipedia in the classroom, and also a community coordinator for Coach for Africa. So, uh, what I'm most excited about Wikipedia education is that uh, the power that it holds to promote learning and information dissemination in a, in a large scale. And also, something that excites me more about Wikipedia and education is the power it's, it's holds to uh, address the challenges of misinformation, disinformation, and missing information that we also have in the, in the um, online spaces. So these are some of the things that excite me more about Wikipedia plus education. And I feel it's something that everybody here should be excited about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Joao. Uh, I'm from Brazil. So what I'm more uh, mostly excited about is the idea that when we are in a conference like that, we are actually a community. We were talking this morning that and you've mentioned it, Job, that uh, in the US, you look at the North Star. In Brazil, we look at the South Cross. Ah. So we have a different guiding star. Awesome. But at the same, uh, in the same way, we are building together a constellation. Mm. So it doesn't really matter the star you are looking at, if it's in the North or the South, uh, to look at open knowledge. And I was talking uh, in the morning with Frank and Leanne about it, is uh, our compass point. I'm also very excited because when we look at becoming a community, in, it means that we are uh, getting serious about having a collective effect and a collective impact. So when I started uh, in education back in 2011 in a program led by Liana, <laughs> uh, interestingly, um, I didn't really understand that there was a movement behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think to some extent, the, the Wikimedia and education movement is possibly one of the strongest and one of the most um, uh, capable parts of our movement to actually lead us to a, to a different uh, quality of future. So I'm very excited about this. Awesome, thank you. Frank. Good morning. Um, my name is Frank Schulenburg. I'm originally from Germany, now living in California. And um, I feel very fortunate that um, I can work um, at the intersection of education and Wikipedia. And um, the reason for that is goes back to my family background. Uh, neither of my parents um, graduated from high school, and um, yet at the same time, they knew that education was a thing that would uh, benefit you and uh, would be the solution for you having a better life. And so um, I think that um, the power of what we're, what we're doing here fascinates me every, every single day. 
And um, I'm most fascinated by the impact that we can have because on the one hand, we can um, provide people through Wikipedia with free access to knowledge, no matter whether your parents are rich or poor. And then at the same time, um, we can provide students and other people with a better learning experience, uh, bringing Wikipedia and education together. And I think that's incredibly powerful and I'm super happy to be here today. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for our panelists. They've shared some personal details. All right, so I'll, I'll work backwards uh, now, but this is really a conversation again. Um, but this is just a question to get us thinking. I'd like to, like to um, sort of hear how we discuss this amongst ourselves. But um, the, the question is in, in relation to innovation, um, things are changing. The world is moving rapidly. Technology is churning out new things every day. Sometimes we can't keep pace. Um, those of us with slower brains, uh, but technology is moving. The world is advancing and every day there's something innovative, something new that is happening. Um, I'm curious, um, starting with you, Frank, if you can share, because you sort of talked about education um, at the intersection of wiki, uh, the wikis, but uh, I'd like to hear from all the panelists, of course, but what are the emerging trends? Uh, what are the emerging innovative trends in education? Uh, what are these technologies in education perhaps that will shape, help shape the future? Um, and how should we start thinking about them? You're coming from the US, you're all from Mexico, Bukola from Nigeria, Rami from Indonesia, um, and Brahim from Morocco. So it would be good to know what's going on, what's happening, what should we know or learn about? Hi. I don't want to foreshadow the, the panel that we're going to have tomorrow uh, on Sunday about ChatGPT, but um, this is a topic that uh, we're currently at Wiki Education. We're discussing that uh, quite a lot. Um, I traveled to uh, New York to an event that was organized by the Wikimedia Foundation a couple months ago, and uh, Leanna and I had the opportunity to talk to instructors at different universities in New York and um, we learned that uh, ChatGPT is kind of the, the one thing that everybody is talking about and everybody is trying to find an answer to how we're going to deal with that and um, one of the one of the classes that that we talked to was a class of non-native uh, English speakers and for them, ChatGPT is really a solution because suddenly they can write texts uh, in English that they would otherwise uh, be struggling with. And so uh, for us with our student program, so we're working with uh, about 800 universities in the United States and in Canada. Um, the big question is really like how many of our students are already using ChatGPT uh, when they create texts for Wikipedia and what are the effects? And uh, I think um, to find uh, ways of productively um, dealing with that topic of generative AI and large language models is one of the things that we'll be dealing with w uh, within the next couple of years. Okay. Uh you all, what's, what's happening in Brazil? <laughs> well, I live in many places. <laughs> well, so when I look at uh, innovation, I'm, I'm sometimes less interested in uh, innovation in the present, but trying to distill from what we get from this changing environment, the trend. Uh -huh. And the trend seems to be quite... Uh, common is I think these new technological trends are profit uh, making directed right which puts us, us in a new layer of challenge because to some extent education at least from Brazil in Brazil wasn't that digitized so we weren't that conscious of the of the role of um, we, we, in the sense, the Brazilian population was not so involved in the sense that education could be happening uh, through computer. 
And since the, the pandemic, when everything changed, then it became very clear and the, I would say the companies be, uh, understood that this was um, a potential for profit making, mm -hmm. which put us in a different position with these companies. And I think this new sense of capital accumulation in the realm of digital education is an emerging trend that I think is also uh, leading what is going on with generative artificial intelligence. Right. And interesting about, interesting about our movement is that we can establish a new drive for these changes in a way that is more desirable, geared, geared towards the social needs of the population and the process of learning. And I think this is going to lead us to a, a new understanding of innovation that is creating uh, not necessarily antagonistic, but a parallel drive around moral values of learning, of the use of technology, uh -huh. a better assessment of needs uh, for some technological changes in the process, making sure that we are aware of the social needs of population, especially in underserved communities, right. like the ones that we have in Brazil. Okay, all right. We'll call out what's happening in Nigeria and other parts of Africa. Okay, um, so like what my um, colleagues have said, the panel, my co-panelists have said, um, generative AI has come to stay and so are uh, in, um, several innovations that are also um, part of the emerging trends that we now see every day. And um, from the context of Africa, the global south, we see have a, uh, so many issues to deal with in terms of uh, um, on, um, unstable internet connectivity and uh, so many other uh, challenges that we face because we are from the global south. But that doesn't really stop the fact that generative AI has come to stay. And um, what, what I see Wikipedia Plus Education doing is trying to change, uh, is trying to help people better understand how to make effective use of this generative AI. Uh, some couple of days ago, I saw on Telegram, Wikimedia AI. I don't know if anyone has also seen that. And I think it's a new idea that uh, they want to use to help people um, get a, a kind of a summary out of existing Wikipedia article. And I, and I think it's a very good one because rather than uh, people making use of chat, uh, chat GPT to extract content from different um, online sources, then uh, if we have the Wiki, uh, Wikimedia AI, then it would help, like, um, help people get meaningful and reliable content, even if it's like a generative AI, but then we believe that it's uh, going to help people retrieve verifiable and reliable information. So uh, generative AI has come to stay, but then we can always help people better make good use of this generative AI by yeah. coming up with innovations. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, I think. Perfect. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, I think the world is changing very fast um, mm -hmm. for, as for Indonesia. Uh, before the pandemic, um, I think that there were not like that uh, many teachers were aware that um, education materials can be have in a, like, uh, we can have like education materials in digital uh, forms. And then the pandemic happened and then suddenly we are here with generative AI. Um, and it's just like it, it threatens um, uh, everything. And I had a, I had a uh, question um, from from a teacher. Then how um, how how are we going to deal with it? Um, and uh, especially with what we're doing with Wikipedia and everything. And I think. Um, yeah, at that at that time, I couldn't really answer because it was a it was it was a new thing for me. It was like a new technology for me. But it was a question that that was raised, and it was one of the thing that also uh, became uh, the focus of like uh, 
especially Wikimedia Indonesia to tackle uh, in the upcoming years. But I think, uh, as uh, what Fukula said, like we're here to also, um, like even though there are a machine learning and everything, but I think there is nothing that can uh, beat the power of like human minds. Mm -hmm. So um, we're here to provide that that side of uh, to just like to balance to balance it, um, especially uh, coming to uh, educational institutions to to educate uh, the way Wikimedia projects work and um, to provide uh contents that are actually used by the generative ais to uh to provide um the information right. so um yeah uh the work that we we are doing here is i think is very important in that terms uh -huh. um and as teachers in indonesia now are more aware of the use of uh, digital platforms uh we also understand why they start to uh, be more concerned about about these uh, these generative AIs and um, what's the future will be like for for the students. Okay. So um, yeah, I think we're here to educate on that part. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, for me, uh, I'm super happy that uh, listening to uh, those uh, innovative ideas. Uh, but at the same time, um, I feel so sad because there is uh, many levels of the risk. For example, in Morocco, we still working. We should take consideration uh, many type of countries and the infrastructure of and the system of each country. For example, in Morocco, we still working with paper, so uh, not with emails. So if you contact, for example, government for partnership will be not the same in Europe or in US. Uh, that if we talk about the system. Uh, the infrastructure is not the same. For example, in Africa, it's not the same in Europe or US. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The sound of <laughs> different countries. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like the James Bond of education. <laughs> uh, so, as I said, there is many level of rhythm or many field that we should uh, take in consideration. So, uh, how it works in each uh, country, what is the infrastructure in each country, mm -hmm. and the perception for us, for example, in Morocco, the big challenge that we face it is the perception to Wikipedia. So that is, for us, is the most hard uh, challenge that we, if we face it, especially with uh, teachers and government. All right. So uh, uh, our wish or our dream is uh, that we can have support uh, or we can work together uh, to give Wikipedia a big place in TV and media uh, that people uh, push people to know uh, more about Wikipedia and the value of the movement and uh, the way that we can exploit uh, use Wikipedia to develop our education and our nation. So right. I think the first thing for us in Morocco is working on the perception hmm. so if everyone uh, if we can correct this per perception so everyone will uh, be motivated to work with us and help us uh, to uh, develop many tools uh, to raise education uh, in morocco or in africa or arab world because right. i think morocco is uh, small simple of the country uh, arab country and africa okay Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we, we've talked a lot about some of the external factors that would affect education, how we see them, technology, um, generative AI and the likes. But I'm curious, from the different regions that we're coming, up, coming up from, what innovations are happening, education on the wiki, that could influence the globe? Uh, I had a really interesting conversation yesterday about a, a project 
um, sort of spurred by uh, the work of um, UNICEF and UNESCO, um, data, the wiki data, sorry, I, I'm not too conversant with the details, but wiki data and sort of having this curriculum that helps you, having a curriculum set where you can search and find out, you know, what country's using what curriculum, what does it mean, and things like that. So on wikis, uh, you know, within our different regions, what innovative things are happening? What is new that can change the world? What is new or budding that people probably are not aware of, but could learn from? That could, that could be game changers, essentially. And I, I, I see y'all, you're nodding, and Rami as well, so please tell us, tell us what's going on. What do we need to learn? Okay, yeah, so I've been nodding because, yes, there's this um, project that is um, currently ongoing, and um, the project was, um, um, was facilitated by Kiwiks. Now, uh, because Africa is always having to deal with uh, the problem of uh, internet, unstable internet connectivity, and then uh, getting data to like edit on Wikipedia is always, uh, always very expensive for some people who cannot afford to get uh, data, right? And right. then as organizers, we also have to deal with uh, providing uh, um, data support for uh, editors who are willing to edit or for teachers who want to be part of the Wikimedia community. But then the idea of using Kiwix, which is an offline, uh, an offline uh, website that help people have free access to Wikipedia was uh, one of the, uh, the big uh, projects that is currently ongoing. And um, this project was also like um, facilitated by Open Foundation West Africa. Mm. Now this project is big to us because uh, it's a new way for students to have free access to Wikipedia. Because um, even though we had like certified some teachers through the reading Wikipedia in the classroom program, some of them um, wanted to like do a step down training or like organize a, have a fan club established in their schools. But then they had to deal with uh, uh, some of these schools not having ICT facilities and then some not also being able to like um, install server and the likes uh -huh. in the um, schools, in the various schools. So having yeah. Kiwix, ha bringing new innovations like Kiwix, which provide offline access for teachers and students to access uh, Wikipedia and some other Wikimedia projects right. is a big one. And I think um, that is something that we want uh, more innovations like this in Africa. Mm -hmm. And we are also um, looking towards how we could not just make this information available offline, but also like providing offline editing access for Wikipedia and some other Wikimedia projects. Right. And I think it's something that uh, collectively we could identify and also uh, profile solution to. Thank Interesting. you. Interesting. Okay. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to put like a context, especially in Indonesian context. Um, I think it was interesting what Brahim said uh, previously, uh, that there are a lot of challenges that we have to deal with like differently, like each country. And as for Indonesia, um, it took us around six, five, six years to be where we are right now with the education program. and it's not uh, we're not even halfway to building the trust with the educational institutions about the wikimedia projects like a lot of them still uh they're not aware uh on how to really make use of uh especially i'm, I'm talking like wikipedia in here because a lot of them only know wikipedia and not like the other wikimedia projects so yeah a lot of them still don't know how to use wikipedia um or they just uh, ban their students from using Wikipedia, don't use Wikipedia. And we're still deal with that. We're still dealing with that. And then especially with the impact of generative AI, mm -hmm. it's an extra work right. for us now with the questions coming, like what's the future and why, why do I have to write on Wikipedia when I can just like type in everything that I'm looking for is there. Right. Um, so it's, it's an extra work for us. Um, 
But yeah, um, as I said before, we're trying to uh, educate them that, uh, uh, you know, there are, um, there are always like uh, something that that we can do like as a, as a human that's more powerful like that than the machine and um writing on like wikipedia it's also it, it's also like actually like a way <laughs> to help like uh, the, the machine learn so like mm. yeah i don't know if that's um that's a correct way to put it but um uh yeah and uh what's what's actually uh What's actually growing is that the the awareness of of teachers uh, with uh, using like the digital platform is actually what we appreciate now, okay. because there are more teachers that uh, eventually they learn about like technology. Because I remember before the pandemic, we had this training of trainers for teachers, and um, a lot of them uh, they they didn't even know how to operate like a browser or something. It was difficult for them, and now we've seen that uh, just the improvement. You know, um, a lot of them are more aware of like the use of technology, and I think that's something that now we we appreciate as something that's uh, really uh, maybe it's not an innovation, but it's something that um, really helps to get the education moves forward okay. in so in Indonesia. Just, just so we understand, because. This is interesting, but uh, are you saying that the access to technology and the use of technology is rebuilding trust and more actors, you know, more um, education actors in Indonesia are more open now to using Wikipedia in their classrooms and things like that? Is there, you know, it's, and in that case, like what would potentially be the next step of that? Yeah, um, yeah, especially with the pandemic, then they relied uh, they they had to rely on technology, right? They had to rely on online platform, and that's how they got to know like a lot of, like about like Wikipedia. And um, we, uh, I had a conversation with a teacher, and uh, she used Wikipedia to che to teach during the 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 online phase, like the lockdown, um, to teach. Uh, the, uh, she was taking like the online materials from it. So um, this is not. Maybe this is not innovation. This is not something new to us, but it's um, it's really refreshing to see the grow um, yeah. and then uh, the awareness that okay, there is like a Wikipedia that I can use. You know that uh, maybe there is not that much trust yet, but the awareness itself that we really we really appreciate right now. So that's yeah. that's the context for for okay. Indonesian. So. Um, that's why what we're trying to do here is to provide like an online course, like online platform training yeah. uh, for them that they can uh, use uh, to learn more about Wikipedia. And we create like uh, uh, videos, uh, tutorials and everything. So this is like our attempt yeah. to, uh, yeah, to improve the digital literacy. Fantastic. Yeah, well, innovation skills. doesn't always have to be loud and flashy. You no, know? it's about what's changing things as we know them. What is? What are the things that are sort of tackling, uh, enabling us to tackle the challenges and you know uh, cross the barriers or break down those barriers? And it's it sounds like in this case for Indonesia, technology is beginning to come in as the innovative piece. Maybe maybe within there's more to hear about that. Uh, but uh, I remember you you were nodding uh, as well. So what what's happening in Brazil? What are the new things? Yeah, so I, I think, in, uh, as you were saying, innovation is a word that we need to some extent to uh, understand in a broader, more complex way. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes innovation is adjusting to changing environments, so right. doing things just differently, so it's less innovation in technology or platform is more uh, innovation in process. Right. One thing that has been happening in Brazil is a, is a change in law for public universities in which um, public university students need to, uh, do, to have in their curriculum 10% 10, 10 of their time at the public university spent on volunteer activities. Right. So this is a new law. And Brazil is a big country with many public universities. And the fact that this opportunity arose has led us to change the way 
that we are understanding the basic functioning of education programs in Brazil in a sense that when we had education programs traditionally, there, there were in the setting of one professor dealing with uh, their classroom and then having uh, Wiki, the Wikimedia project as a platform for assessment, evaluating the students' learning. Mm -hmm. But here we are in an education setting in which students will have uh, a social activist acti uh, role in, the, in to some extent a developmental strategy for the country. So this is shaping the way that we are framing the education programs, we are establishing uh, programs and uh, learning resources for the professors to be able to guide this, the students in these new activities. And this is gonna be, we, ex we expect, in a different scale of work from the one we were used to, which were around dozens of professors in different universities that we were supporting to a sense in which we might be able to reach eventually hundreds of thousands of uh, students. Right. And when you deal with this changing environment, then you need to adjust. And this is, re so it, it's eventually not necessarily innovating, but reframing, changing the way that we even conceptualize the education program as such. And okay. This is the changing thing in Brazil right now. I'm, I'm curious because earlier on you mentioned that one of the barriers that you now have to deal with is profiteering in education. So how is, you know, if you think of this work at the intersection of that, how is that, you know, um, what are the considerations and what's possible and can we remove profiteering from education in Brazil entirely from the work you're doing? So that's a good question and in in real terms, what is also happening in Brazil is the changing environment of big tech regulations. Okay. So we are currently uh, voting in Brazil a new, a new bill to have the platforms, the for-profit platforms regulated as they were directly involved in the political uh, crisis in our country just recently. Right. And this will change the way that these platforms actually uh, operate in the country. So the bill hasn't passed it's a lot of political dispute, but in the same law, we were able to establish an exception for the Wikimedia projects as they are related to education. Right. So, to some, so these two bills are independent. The one that we call the extension bill, which is the one for the 10% uh, student load on volunteer activities, but also the regulation of the platforms. And we see that as working together in a sense that we could create, so we could be uh, pioneering this uh, new ecosystem for volunteer work right. in students in a way that is not that affected by the big techs in Brazil that have their agendas and this agenda is for profit and it's been related to the, sh to the spread of fake news in Brazil uh -huh. and so on. So I actually think this is uh, an environment in which we could have a stronger ground than the for-profit corporations. Well, that's interesting. That's really great. Um, Frank, is there, what innovation should we look out for coming out of, would that be the US and Germany? Well, when, when we, um, f for, our, for our instructors in, in our programs, I think that um, information literacy and, um, and critical thinking have always been one of the things that were extremely important uh, for what they wanted to get out of our program. Um, and um, when you look at uh, the state of like media literacy in the United States, uh, there was a study conducted by Stanford University a couple of years ago that looked into uh, what is the status of that. And it turned out that like a large majority of students could not tell why getting information about climate change from uh, a website operated by an oil company was not a good idea. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and I think that in, in a world where more and more people get information online, um, 
critical thinking and, and media literacy are uh, such important skills. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing uh, looking into the future um, that, that uh, I think we're seeing is that uh, also data literacy. And uh, with that, I mean like ways to think about like how we can teach data literacy uh, by using Wikidata uh, as a platform. Uh, is certainly a thing that that we think is is something we are going to look into. Okay. Thank you, um, Brahim. You haven't shared with us what innovative things are happening, and it's an interesting challenge that you have to deal with um, in in a paper based society. How do we innovate in knowledge and education? So I think, as I said uh, before, um, the big challenge was the negative perception about Wikipedia. So what we did uh, is talking to the press media and sharing information about uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia movement and uh, its value. So, and that um, was spreading uh, sound about Wikipedia. So people start uh, to read about Wikipedia. And then uh, we get partnership with an association uh, called Network of Lecture in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the biggest uh, opportunity because the member of this association was teachers. Okay. So uh, we did a communication session with them. So we explained uh, the value of the movement and how we can use Wikipedia inside the classroom. Then, so imagine from 2020, we start with 100 uh, teacher and now we reach uh, 800 Fantastic. in just three years. And uh, thank you. Now we are <laughs> starting the third edition uh, of uh, Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom. Okay. And in each edition, uh, we did like uh, uh, study research. So we evaluate uh, the, uh, the operation and we share the results with government, with director, uh, director, directorate, yes. So now we start receiving invitation from uh, from government right. to do training uh, in many region of Morocco so like there is a competitive uh, spirit between every region and now we have a second challenge that we don't have enough of uh, certificate training in Morocco to do training <laughs> for all region and that is a um, amazing for us because we didn't expect that we will get this result in just in three years mm -hmm. uh, especially after covid so uh, now people start talking about how we can uh, uh, how we can know more about wikipedia for example oer uh, um, so the problem i think or the challenge that we uh, we have now is communication. Right. So if we if the foundation can provide uh, like I don't know for example a videos talking about Wikipedia and how we can use Wikipedia inside classroom in all language, right, right, that will help. Okay. So for example, if I I am simple teacher, I will look for uh, information about Wikipedia, we'll just find in videos in uh, YouTube, for example, and that is not really up. Mm -hmm. So, or I will find uh, videos from community and I don't know as a simple teacher, how is, uh, how work uh, foundation and movement. I don't have any idea or any information uh, that there is a movement, there is people behind Wikipedia. Right. So when I will find information, I will find a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So I will stop. So if we can uh, regroup or collect all information and put it in official website of uh, Wikimedia Foundation, for example, so that will be one source that will serve all community and all in all language. So that will be easy for people, for teacher that uh, can trust the information that's provided uh, from the website mm -hmm. and. For example, to to put uh, OER uh, uh, tools, there is no place. For example, you have to put in commons, 
but as I said, as simple teacher, I don't know how how can how can contribute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have the right information yeah. to do that effectively. So uh, I think we should um, think as uh, in the place of those teacher, mm -hmm. because because they are struggling to find information. They are struggling to uh, they want to contribute, but they don't know how. Right. Okay. So uh, we, we've shared uh, uh, some interesting things um, look, uh, based on the challenges and the ways that we're looking to address those challenges. I'd like to learn a little about who we need on this journey to get to the destinations that we sort of um, talked about. How do we, uh, who do we work with, um, for instance, to think a little differently about how we engage and the best ways to communicate and who are the people, sometimes you have gatekeepers in some communities, but who are those gatekeepers, for instance, that we need to engage with and talk to so that we can truly innovate from within our uh, wiki education movement so that we can truly educate and um, influence the world. But before, before I come back to the panel and ask that question, I'm taking a look at time, and I'm wondering if we have any questions, thoughts, or comments from the room before we get, uh, get back to the panel. Um, if you have a question, please raise your hand. A comment. Uh, all right, none yet. Selesh, did you? <laughs> no, he must. He must talk. Just prepping so, so himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I can share a comment. Yeah. Okay. You know, like uh, before before joining the Wikimedia Foundation, I was also an organizer myself, and I was doing education program in my region, and I was like trying to understand like all the challenges that was being brought, and the innovations that we are talking about. I mean, this is something that I'm still thinking about, like. What would be the innovation, you know, in my region for that? Because when I was doing like education programs, like back in 2014, 2015, uh, like it's easy to say that, you know, go to college, go to universities and do education programs. But it's hard to find like, what's the right way? Because for me, it was always been like, it's not about that like, going to the college and introducing Wikipedia to them. For me, it was also like, okay, I have to teach them how to write Odia on the computer first. I have to teach them like, this is, this, is the, this is the keyboard. These are like multiple keyboards you have. These are the things you have to use. These are the conjunction words. This is everything. So it takes a lot of effort, you know? Uh -huh. Like when we think of like doing a, a program, when we think of like Wikimedia as an education, we are doing two things actually. The digital literacy that we are thinking of, we're also introducing the students how to write on the computer by themselves. Because for me, I was the first generation Odia to like look for something on the internet in my own script or contribute to the Wikipedia. So that's like something like a comment like I wanted to share, you know, like uh -huh. listening to this panel. So it was amazing. Yeah, thank you. All right, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Rami, you have a thought on that? I think. Uh, sorry, yeah. Brahim. Okay. <laughs> yes, Brahim, you have a thought on that? Uh, I think we should talk about AWOC, uh, uh, EduWiki uh, uh, collabor uh, Outreach Collaborator. It okay. was uh, an experience that uh, we should talk about. And I think it's innovative uh, experience because uh, that regroup all uh, contributor in, uh, in every region. And we, we start to talk about challenges of every country mm -hmm. and how uh, we can fi face those challenges. So uh, it was an amazing journey with Silesh, uh, and I think it should be uh, take in consideration uh, this experience because uh, it can give idea about in every region uh, the level or the rhythm that we can uh, have in uh, every country okay so we can uh, plan a scenario for the future taking consideration all experience through ewok uh, project okay do you have okay <laughs> so let's take that into consideration um Yoel, did you have something to say to you <laughs> well, i can say something uh, can you hear me yeah okay so one thing that we've learned, I think it connects to what you're asking, what's being said, is that 
uh, across the year, what we've learned from our campaign around education is, is that when we do a national campaigning, the universities that we bring along, the professors we bring along are generally, f even though they are coming from public university, they are from the wealthiest parts of the country. Mm. And a couple of years ago, we came up with this actually broader understanding that everyone, every time we were actually campaigning for Wikimedia education, we were to some extent ag aggravating the inequity of the educational system in Brazil. So I think since uh, 2015, there have been around 500 education programs in Brazil. Half of them were from a single university, uh, the largest public university in Brazil, which is the wealthiest university in Brazil, which is the mm -hmm. University of Sao Paulo, the wealthiest state in the country, mm. which is fine. It's a really interesting university, but we wanted to decouple this understanding that Wikimedia education is actually belongs more to the wealthier settings in educational systems. Right. But the problem is, as Salash was saying, that when you go to public universities in the countryside or in the Amazonian forest or in areas that have low connectivity, that don't have infrastructure, you're actually dealing with a level of complexities right. that are connected to the fact that these are poorer, really poorer areas. Uh -huh. So when we come there and speak about the digital world, they have so many other priorities, just making sure that the roof of the school or the university doesn't collapse, right. that uh, their level of challenge is different. So what uh -huh. we've learned from our experience is that more than focusing on the platforms or technical technological uh -huh. environment, right. the, the Wikimedia movement is also a different practice of education. Mm -hmm. So it's a collaborative practice that we sometimes encapsulate in the sense of the wiki way. Right. And this is to some extent uh, uh, not following the script of educational settings which individually students are doing one single thing and not necessarily collaborating but just creating a sense that what you know matters, so popular education matters, in a sense that you can actually establish in a setting, in a classroom, a sense of everyone building the same uh, knowledge base, this is already bringing them to the Wikimedia movement in a mm -hmm. way. Right. Despite the fact that we are not using Wikipedia because there is no connectivity, there is no electricity in some of uh, these areas. Right. And this, in Brazil, connects a lot to, a, to a, an educator, a, theori a theoretical educator called Paulo Freire, who wrote a series of books called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, in which you challenge the idea that you come with a platform for education. And it's more in the sense that you need to build upon what people know and what they live. And sometimes bringing Wikipedia to some classrooms is actually not necessarily the good thing. It's better to actually bring the methodology of what we do right, more, more than, than the actual technological fetishism <laughs> of the project. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So uh, building on that um, and recognizing that in Brazil, in Africa, parts of Nigeria and Indonesia and Morocco, we have panelists on the table. Who are the actors? that we need to bring into these conversations. If we're looking at the challenges in Morocco and what needs to happen, who are the actors we need to engage with? Should Brazil continue to find that big school and say, hey, you, have, you can do things differently? Or is this just something that a different group of people need to take forward? And who are the people to take along on that journey? In Nigeria, in Nigeria if we think about QX, if that is the way to take things forward, who are the people to scale that work and take it forward? Who do we need to engage with? And in um, Indonesia as well, how do we do it differently? You know, how do we move from paper-based in, um, in Morocco and who are the people? Is it still the government people? Is there some way to do something else? And are there people in the local communities that we can engage with to bring, uh, to bring education or bring the methodologies of education to them? Um, I like the way that you put it, Joao. Uh, I'm throwing this to you, panelists, and we have, uh, you know, if you can take a minute to share that, some of that, uh, some thoughts on the actors we need to, yes, actors okay. and stakeholders. Yeah. Okay, um, so talking about stakeholders, 
I think uh, most times what we do as organizers is that we tend to focus more on our participants. Uh, uh, that is the primary stakeholders. Most times that's what we do. And then we only reach out to uh, the secondary stakeholders, those in the government, uh, those organizations who would have helped us project uh, our, our like um, not really just amplify the projects or like make it uh, give their recommendation. Most times we tend to leave them out of the um, planning process mm -hmm. and even the implementation process. So this makes it a, a lot difficult to align our programs and activities with what is already in existence. So I feel what we need to do is Rather than just reaching out to this big organization uh, for recognition, we also need to involve them in the process of what we are doing. They need, we need to get their voices. We need to get their inputs. Because if we can get their inputs, then it would also help us see how we can really align what we do with uh, what is What's already really in happening existence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's where we need to improve upon. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I would like to like cite an instance. While I was implementing the reading Wikipedia in the classroom, I reached out to UNESCO. And the, re the main reason why I reached out to UNESCO was for recognition. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Because Fair yes, enough. UNESCO is a big name and if you can get them on board, fine. It mm -hmm. makes the project very big and then everybody gets to know about it. Then along the line, I discovered that there's this... Um, um, existing media and information literacy guide that was already uh, prepared and published by UNESCO. Right. So when um, I, I, I reached out to uh, UNESCO, they wanted to also see the course module that we, uh, we intend to use for the teachers. So presenting the course module and then um, trying to compare it with the existing UNESCO MIL, I, I um, add like a clearer um, understanding of, okay, yes, uh, this course model um, aligns well with what is already in existence. Mm -hmm. And then uh, UNESCO was also able not to just um, accept uh, the project, but also like uh, go over what some of the resources that we have already. And so this really made it uh, impactful right. and it made it a whole lot of success. So I think instead of just seeing our stakeholders as one of those big people that gives us recognition, we should try to also make them become part of the process, the planning, right. the implementation, because getting their insight, getting their recommendation would go a long way to help us improve what we do. Thank you. All right. Thank you too. Frank, yes. Yeah, my answer goes in, this, in the same direction. I think it's always that we need to pay attention to the context that uh, people locally are operating in. And that means that the one natural ally that we have, whether it's in Morocco or in the United States or somewhere else on the planet, are the educators. And they're, uh, they're even, even within a, a specific country, uh, they're dealing with uh, a very different context sometimes. So uh, when you talk to someone who's at a prestigious university like Harvard uh, or at someone who's at a rural community college, those are people that were uh, the, the answer of how we fit in it might be a very, very different one. And I think we need to listen to those people. They are our natural allies. And we need to better understand of where they're coming from and then adapt our answer to what their needs are and what the needs of their, their learners are. Right. Okay. Um, I'll be coming back to the audience. Do we have any thoughts, comments, questions that we want to ask our panelists? I think we have time for maybe one or two. One. Okay. <laughs> Liana. We just need one. Okay, so one. I thought you had a question. So one question from our audience. Okay, looks like our panel hashed it out completely. Awesome. <laughs> yes. 
Um, can I share also like something in, yes. um, in response to that? Um, I think what's been interesting in um, our community in Indonesia is um, for Indonesia, the community, the volunteers have been like the backbone of our projects now. Um, we have only a few people that have a background as educators who really go into the field and do the trainings. The rest of it are done by our volunteers who are not even experts in education, but they have experience of editing Wikipedia and they are able to connect it with the, uh, with the educational part. So this is what we are going to continue to try to grow. And I hope that I will see this in the next few years is that our communities have grown independent uh, and they will be able to independently organize their education projects. Uh, because right now um, they can organize, but they still need like the guidance from us. But I really hope that the communities grow. And I really hope that this is what I will see maybe in the 2030 that okay. our communities will uh, will have grown and will have been able to organize the education projects by themselves and maybe come up with creative ideas or creative strategies um, because these volunteers have been just like actively going to the universities giving trainings to the students and also like to the teachers and they have no experts in mm -hmm. educational field right. but their experience uh, were what uh, built them that they are able to stand um, in front of the students and talk about uh, what is the benefit of using Wikipedia uh, in the classroom. So uh, for us, in Wikimedia Indonesia, not only that we also have planned to uh, have more collaboration with mission aligned organizations and that's that's uh, that's of course like this for sure but also uh, developing our communities uh, I think is what we are going to continue to do in the next few years all right fantastic thank you, thank you so much to our panelists today we've shared some very interesting conversations all right and thank you for indulging me <laughs> thank you all Thank you for this session. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, I would like to invite you now uh, for a group uh, for a group <laughs> photo. Sorry. Uh, so uh, you can go to the restaurant. We will guide you. Uh, it's um, you're going through the restaurant through the door in the backyard, and we will take a photo uh, from the stairs. So uh, just sorry. Um, bear in mind uh, that the grass is a little bit wet from the rain. So. Uh, it might be uh, a little slippery, so please bear in mind that, but I hope it will be okay. <laughs>